All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming back to the conference. Uh, I'm sure you guys had a good lunch and the stomachs are full. Let us now restart and regather to ensure that our minds are equally full alongside <laughs> the lovely lunch we had. So without further ado, uh, before we kickstart the uh, chain of next panel sessions, may I have the pleasure to invite Brother Mustafa Adil. Brother Mustafa Adil, uh, London Stock Exchange Group, you've already listened to him in the previous panel session. What a thought-provoking session that was. He is going to launch uh, the Islamic Finance Development Report, F uh, uh, IFDI 2023, from the platform of uh, London uh, Stock Exchange Group. So, Brother Mustafa Adil, please come on stage. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salam. Ala Sayyidina wa Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm delighted to be here with you today to launch the 10th edition of our Islamic Finance Development Indicator, which is developed in collaboration with the Islamic Corporation for the Development of the Private Sector, the ICD, a Islamic Development Back Group entity. If we can have the presentation, please. So this year's report is entitled Navigating Uncertainty, because we have all seen over the course of the last 18 to 24 months, there has been significant uncertainty in economic markets and financial markets alike due to various macroeconomic pressures. And that has had an impact on the Islamic finance industry as well. Just as a reminder, the indicator that we're mentioning aims to measure the development of the Islamic finance industry across multiple different dimensions and metrics. We look at the financial performance of the industry across multiple sectors, including Islamic banking, sukuk, takaful, and others. But we also look at other qualitative measures. We look at governance in any jurisdiction. We look at sustainability and CSR activities. We look at knowledge and how well the industry is supported by knowledge institutions. And finally, we look at awareness. We cover 136 different countries and we rank them and give them a score based on their development across all of these different dimensions. If we look at the growth of the industry, you know, we're in a position where globally Islamic finance has a presence virtually everywhere in the world. There are over 1,800 Islamic financial institutions that operate in 80 countries, and you have presence of Islamic finance everywhere from Australia to North America, from South Africa to Russia. If we look at the ranking of the Islamic finance industry, Malaysia continues to lead the industry scoring uh, the first position in our indicator, which it has consistently done over the last decade. We also see Saudi Arabia that has made significant gains in the last few years and Indonesia who take the second and third position. And then from positions four, five, and six, Bahrain, Kuwait, and the UAE, there is very, very little difference. In fact, there's less than one point difference between these three different countries. So it's a very, very close development across all these markets. And then afterwards, we have Pakistan, Oman, and various other countries. If we look at the size of the industry, the Islamic finance industry today consists of over $4.5 trillion in assets. And this, what we do, as, as those of you who are familiar with the indicator would know, is we do a bottom-up analysis looking at the financial statements of every single Islamic financial institution that discloses its financials. The industry grew by 11% overall uh, in 2022. And the, as I mentioned, there's over 1,800 Islamic financial institutions operating in over 80 countries around the world. And what's also interesting is that Islamic banking makes up about 72% of the overall industry. So clearly, it's still the largest segment of the Islamic finance industry continues to be the banking sector, followed, close, followed by uh, the Sukuk sector, which makes up about 17%. We've also done an assessment in this year's report, being our 10th year, 10th report, we have done an assessment of the development of the industry over the last 10 years, so that you can map and see the growth of the industry across those markets. And a couple of very interesting insights. Over the last 10 years, six years, we have seen double digit growth in the Islamic finance industry, which is very, very heartening and continues to support the claim that Islamic finance is one of the fastest growing segments within the overall financial services industry. 
The other very, very interesting factor that we note is that whereas 10 years ago, about 62% of Islamic financial institutions consisted of Islamic banks and 38% of windows, today that number is shift. And now Islamic banking windows make up about 45% of uh, Islamic financial institutions. This is not surprising because what we have seen is that as new and new markets introduce Islamic finance, it's usually the conventional banks that launch windows to offer Islamic financial products to their customers first. So it's not surprising to see that windows today as Islamic banking grows beyond its core markets of the GCC, Southeast Asia, as it moves to more emerging and frontier markets, we see more and more Islamic banking windows offering Islamic financial products to their customers. Now, if we deep dive into the financial performance, we can actually have a breakdown of sector by sector analysis. And the biggest sector, as we mentioned, was the Islamic banking sector. It consists of about $3.2 trillion of assets as disclosed in uh, 2022. Uh, the Islamic banking sector grew by 13%, so grew faster than the overall industry in 2022. Um, and there are currently over 610 Islamic banks that are operating across the world. And the largest markets continue to be Iran, Malaysia, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, UAE, and Kuwait. On the Sukuk side, again, Sukuk was $788 billion at the end of 2022. This year, that number is a lot closer to $800 billion. Um, and they grew, Sukuk grew by 11% last year. And there's nearly 5,000, so 4,800 Sukuk that are currently outstanding today. And what's interesting is that it's projected to grow in, in the next five years to $1.3 trillion. When we look at Islamic funds, there was a major decline in assets under, held under management of Islamic funds in 2022. And this is not surprising given the broader macroeconomic environment that was operating, significant impact on equities, significant impact on uh, fixed income instruments and Sukuk as well. So there was a major impact on assets held under management, but the number of Islamic funds have still continued to grow compared to 2021. And the report also contains details on other Islamic financial institutions, which grew by 6% and consist of $168 billion in assets, and on the takaful industry, which grew very, very impressively at 16% in 2022, but still makes up a very small segment, only $90 billion in total assets. Now, if we move to the ecosystem, again, there's a number of very, very interesting insights that we can look at. So starting with governance. So... Today, there is about 54, sorry, 52 different jurisdictions around the world that have some form of Islamic banking regulation. What, why that is important, and that's grown from 48 in 2021. Why that's important is because these are 54 jurisdictions where policymakers or regulators have recognized the significance of Islamic finance and have actively worked to introduce some kind of regulations around that. And the report contains details of the segments of regulations and so on. We, look, we have a uh, Sharia scholars uh, statistics as well in terms of the number of scholars that are operating in the industry. So as I mentioned, 1,800 Islamic financial institutions, 1,300 scholars that are represented on boards of these institutions. And when we look at the average disclosure, disclosure continues to be low. Of the metrics that we measure in terms of corporate governance disclosures, only 28% of the disclosure items are disclosed by Islamic banks in their financial statements. Looking at sustainability, again, this is something that is a fast-growing segment of the Islamic finance industry. We know that sustainable, sustainability on the Sukuk side, uh, sustainable Sukuk have been growing at more than 80% year on year. They make up about $24 billion today, and they're one of the fastest-growing segments within the Sukuk space and significantly oversubscribed. So we look at oversubscription data, so your average sustainability of green Sukuk is oversubscribed 4.4 times compared to your average uh, traditional Sukuk, which is oversubscribed 3.3 times. The report also provides information on uh, assets uh, held under ESG funds and various other um, metrics, including disclosure requirements, guidelines that are being introduced in different jurisdictions, and CSR activities as well. 
And finally, if you look at knowledge and awareness, um, you know, the Islamic financial institutions that continue to offer Islamic finance education continue to grow in different jurisdictions, whether that is pure education providers or whether that is institutions that are offering degrees as well. And if you look at awareness, while seminars and conferences have continued to grow, one of the segments that is really short has been virtual events or webinars. And, you know, we had nearly 700 webinars that were held in 2022 related to Islamic finance. That's almost two webinars a day. And it's very heartening to see we had tremendous growth in webinars during the COVID crisis, but that's not something that is dissipated. And the capacity building and awareness building for the industry continues to grow through the availability of these webinars. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a very quick overview um, of the report. Please do download the report and go through it in detail. It's free to download for everybody to access. You can either scan the QR code or you can access this through the web link zabia.com, Islamic Economy, Islamic Finance Reports. And if you come to our stall, we also have uh, s small business cards with the QR code available and you can just pick one up and then download it in your own time. Please do go through this report as we believe it offers a lot of value and insight for the Islamic finance industry. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand it back to the MC. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Brother Adil. This was very crisp, very informative. And uh, as always, this report every year gives you the update statistics about Islamic finance growth all over the world in different key segments that helps the industry move so on and so forth. Now, I mean, uh, uh, guys, this report was just another feature of what we have been achieving in terms of knowledge creation, capacity building, and in terms of, you know, knowing and understanding about Islamic finance from this beautiful platform that we call the IOF ISDB Annual Conference. Now, since morning, if we try and summarize and, 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 and wrap up to the point that we are here, what we have learned is within the main ambit of the theme of the conference is the fact that Islamic finance is very instrumental to achieve economic diversification from in an array of pers uh, perspective. Last session talked about so many other areas of Islamic finance that can help achieve the very economic diversification that countries and, in, and communities are sorting out for, especially in an environment that is post-COVID environment and so on and so forth. One of the things, folks, that will indeed f uh, shape not only the current trajectory but also the future of Islamic finance is digitization and, and, and technological disruption that is fast gaining momentum day in and day out. Islamic finance, which I believe folks sometimes say that it is a subservient system, perhaps it is true, but I think it, given it has its own identity, Islamic finance is going to be no different when it's going to be affected either in a tamed fashion or an associative fashion or a disruptive fashion from what we call as technology disruption. Now, this is the importance of this uh, conference that in this conference, IOFI and ISDB, what they have done is they've tried to link each and every session, each and every speech in a bouquet where the connectivity is put forward for you to understand the whole big picture in a correct manner.